I'm here at the Nordic Film Days in Lübeck, and my guest today is Gülminder Agner Gülminsson, yeah. the director of Beautiful Beings. I would like, I'd like to talk to you about that film. Would you give our viewers a brief insight in what the film is about? Yeah, it's about the group of boys uh, who are kind of navigating friendship in a little hostile kind of um, environment, I would say. You also wrote the story. Mm. What was the initial thought for the film? Um, the story is inspired from my own teenage years growing up in the suburbs of Iceland. And at that period in Iceland, there was a lot of uh, violence among young boys. And so it's kind of inspired from, from that period, but it's still a fictional story. Yeah, right at the beginning uh, of the film, a reporter is saying, uh, police reports show that violence among young people is in Iceland is a rising issue, yeah. and uh, especially in the capital area. Do we have more information on that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, at this, it, the film happens around 2000, and then violence among young boys was very high. It's like um, in my school, a big portion of the boy culture was involved in some kind of act of violence, you know, not every day, but, but that was kind of looked upon as a virtue to be, you know, active in that. Uh, now it's changed a lot, so it isn't, it's, yeah, the culture has changed and this kind of toxic masculinity isn't as dominating in Iceland as it used to be, but there is still you know, violence among youth, youth, but it's in a smaller, you know, much smaller capacity. So all the boys uh, in the film, they come from neglected homes, except Adi. He's mm. got a loving mother at home, and is he maybe uh, some kind of your younger version of yourself? Well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like commenting on that uh, in particular. Um, yeah, but... I can say that I had a very strong female role model in my life, you know, my mother and my sisters. And in general, like um, the Iceland culture, the female, you know, even though we had all this toxic masculinity, we had, we, 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 at that time, we still had very strong female role models. So it was like a little contrastic society in that way. So when you're filming with uh, young actors in a film about toxic masculinity, mm. especially in scenes with violence, how do you make sure that no one leaves the set with a trauma? A trauma. I mean, we prepare them uh, very well. We, we, like almost a year before we shoot the film, we find the boys, the actors, we invite them for a uh, workshop where we teach them just acting and it's more fun and it's you know, just enjoyable. And then we slowly introduce them to the story. Of course, their family have read, their parents have read the story from the beginning. And we have explained to them, you know, the biggest elements. But um, yeah, then we just to make sure to kind of uh, nurture them and make sure that this negative behavior doesn't influence them in their personal life. And they are remarkably good in that film. And how did you, what, where did you find them? We did the open casting. You know, we got a lot of boys and a lot of kids to come. And then we navigate and find the ones we feel like are most suited for every role. And then we just train them. Okay. Uh, you also had an amazing director of photography, yeah. uh, Sturla Brand Gövlin, um, who some people might know from Victoria or another round. Yeah. Um, how did you two work together to capture these amazing images? Uh, we, we worked together since we were doing short films. Um, so, uh, and Sturtla's role in giving the actors freedom and the visual language of the film is very big. You know, we, I, I would say the when we shoot the film, it becomes like a dance between the actors, Sturtla and me. So we're all kind of choreographing the scenes together. And yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's a big creative partner in, in, in how to shoot and execute the film. And um, how much in the film was scripted? How much was maybe improvised on set? 
Um, everything is scripted in a film. It, I work very intensely on a script before, but it comes back to the way we shoot it, is that we give the boys freedom to move within a scene in different ways. So they can improvise their movement, even though they have to execute these lines and do maybe certain things within a scene, but they can always kind of move a little bit freely and Sturtla kind of guides them or, or follows them through that. You know, so yeah, so that's kind of the improvisation between me, Sturtla and the actors, is how to execute the scenes. And when you look at the final film now, yeah. Is it exactly what you had in mind in the first place, or did it change over the course of the development? It changes. I mean, the script is the same, but the execution changes a lot. You know, the, both when you find the actors, when you find the locations, how we shoot it then, you know, and I, and I think that's the most fun part of shooting a film, is to kind of have this improvisation uh, with the actors and Sturtla so we can ensure that we have the best visuals that we want, but also the best acting and, you know, so, so in that sense, it's a very organic process when we're shooting it. Um, just a hypothetical question. Um, mm. Would you have changed or made anything different if you had, let's say, unlimited money or unlimited time? I don't think the f anything yeah. needs to be changed. No, no, so no, no. Don't get me wrong. No, 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 no. I mean, when we were doing the VFX, that there, you know, you hit the budget limit, you know, and but we pushed that, and the VFX artists we had were great. So I think, you know, they probably would have liked to get more paid for their work, <laughs> in that sense. And and a lot of people that work on the film would, you know, kind of deserve to get better paid, but, but you know, but uh, yeah. So maybe I would would pay people a little bit better <laughs> if I had unlimited money. That's a good answer. Um, Beautiful Beings is, uh, well, has been selected as the Icelandic entry for best foreign language film at the Oscars. Yeah. What was your first reaction when you heard the news? Just, uh, yeah, very happy and proud. I'm, I'm happy to represent my country and, and it's, it helps the visibility of the film. And, and, I, and I also enjoy the fact that it's not a atypical film from Iceland. It's very different from you know, many other films that have been in that position before. In which parts of Iceland did you film? In, in the capital, uh, yeah, the west side of Iceland, uh, west side of the capital, west of Bairi. Okay. I'm always intrigued in uh, how, it's, how it's possible that so many wonderful films are co coming from such a small country. Mm. What is so special about the Icelandic film scene or the, the film community? Well, you know, it's, it's a very passion-driven film society that we have. And we are, we're, we're not, you know, we don't have a big home market. So when we're doing films, we're not doing it commercially for our home market so much. We, like, we do some films like that and they're very nice. But we, but we are more thinking about, yeah, kind of, I mean, honestly, I think it's, it's a virtue in Iceland to, to be creative and to follow your own way of, of being creative. And, and I think for most directors and filmmakers, it's important that they're doing films that they, they could do and no one else would be doing you know, exactly the same thing. So I think that's maybe a part of that. Okay. One of the greatest Icelandic filmmakers just got an homage to this yeah, festival, yeah. Fredrik Thor Fredriksson. Um, who, who's basically the, the one who started everything. Yeah, yeah. How do you remember him when you were starting in the business? When I, when I was starting, the Icelandic film business was much smaller. And I just rem, you know, remember being inspired, you know, you know because he, he, he's done so many great films. And also just the story behind how he started. That's, you know, I don't know if you know that story, but that's an amazing story, how he got, you know, his first film funding and and uh, Brendan also how he kind of fooled everyone in Iceland that he was making a film. Yeah, there's a big story there. Okay. That, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I have to find that out. Yeah, yeah, it's a great story. <laughs> He's a very uh, big inter entrepreneur for Icelanders. And a lovely guy. Yeah, yeah. So let's have a look into the future. Mm. 
Are there any new projects you can already talk about? What's coming up? Uh, I mean, I, w I have a production company as well, and we're producing. So now I'm producing this uh, British Icelandic film uh, with Thorður. It's his first feature who did Valhalla Murders TV shows. And uh, yeah, we're co-producing that um, for myself. Uh, I, I really want to explore further the uh, supernatural element that I kind of touch on in Beautiful Beings. I would kind of like to make a story that that element kind of get, gets more space and more room. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Good luck with the screening tonight. Yep. And uh, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.